Well, you've been all been hearing some of the major media stories about the economic the economy is great. You know, we're seeing all kinds of blossoms on the tree of the economy as we are looking at the situation or supposedly looking at the situation from their point of view. And I don't want to put the negative point of point of view, but I'm going to give you the realistic point of view. Um, boy, it's 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 really a hodgepodge of information that they're throwing at people. For one, was I talked about the unemployment rate, which is actually the newly unemployed rate. The employment participation rate is way down. Now, also, there's other things going on. It's showing that the stock market is actually pretty much peaked out. You know, it's almost like you're going into the tunnel now where you don't know where the hell things are going to be heading because they're not. it's not a rosy picture. It's, well, you know, I don't want to put the negativity out there, but, you know, it's like this. You know, the stock market has actually far outpaced the GDP and inflation rate, which normally over, I don't know, at least the last hundred years, I think it is, or at least, you know, in all the time period of financial reporting that, you know, in modern day United States has been around, like the 20th century and the 21st century, the stock market has been, been within a couple percentage points of the inflation rate added to the GDP growth rate, the general equities market. Whereas in this situation, it's more than double that, actually. And uh, we, what I could kind of figure what's been going on is that the Fed spending has actually inflated the stock markets. You know, it's, it's it's kind of put the wool over people's eyes or the hair over their eyes where they can't really see what's going on exactly because they're focused in on those numbers. But, you know, there's other numbers out there that reveal that stock markets are too high, which is the old standby numbers with ratio, which is called the price-earnings ratio. You know, it's a, it's, it's a thing that just tells you, are the markets pricey? And, you know, they've been pricey for like a year. And but you know the predictions about twenty thousand Dow, you know it's like you know it goes a little over eighteen thousand and it slides all the way down to like the low seventeen thousands, then it goes back up again. It's really not doing anything, and you know it's kind of weird too. It's not it's not really doing much on the opposite side with the commodities. People are expecting the commodities to go down to some ungodly numbers like oil to go down to twenty dollars a barrel or something like that and it's not happening now here's another chart i just want to bring this chart out because it's not very well known it's actually from the new york fed okay you know you get somebody say oh i took the numbers from the fed you know you come on i mean <laughs> they're numbers that are supporting the case that the situation's not good this is actually a fed survey of consumer expectation household one year ahead spending growth expectations Look at his ski slope, man. It's going off the cliff. In other words, nobody's expecting to spend any money in the near in the future for the next year. So what the hell is that telling you? How good can the retail economy actually be good? And how good that could that be for China? Because China is an export economy that's selling in the United States. So people, consumers are saying to themselves, we're not going to be spending. And also, you know, you can go buy future orders. Future orders for goods and services. Now, this is expectations. I don't have a chart on future orders, but future orders is way down. You can look at the past and say, oh, the orders have been going up, the present, or non-fulfilled orders is up or whatever, but future orders is way down, which goes along with expectations. It's way down. So, you know, everybody's drinking the Bud Light up there and freaking... Uh, <laughs> JP Morgan and Chase Manhattan and whatever the hell it is or in Goldman Sachs like they're like thinking hey man it's, well you know what they're just blowing smoke every, up everybody's kazoo you know they're telling people what they want to hear um, and you know that's part of the situation because you know you want to keep things rosy because having people have to pump people's up expectations up keeps the spending going but you know it looks like people are getting wise to that because they don't expect to spend as much next year in the future as as much as they did in past years and that new york federal reserve chart proves that all right so uh but you know in the financial news it's astoundingly nose uh rosy it's like they're you know they're telling you you know there's records trade surpluses in china even though they got problems going on with the just avoided a major meltdown in the real estate sector again and you know they're China's actually got problems, you know, they got their ears out of what the situation's going to be coming up. Now, as far as you, 
you should be a prepper, you know, just like uh, Rocky the Cat over here. Rocky the Cat, you know, this is my cat. <laughs> he's uh, he likes to sleep. He's sleeping here right now. As a matter of fact, I was take, I took a picture because it's like his favorite place. He likes to sleep with his head, which he's doing right now at this minute, with his head on a three foot pile of cat food. <laughs> the three foot stack of cat food, man. That's his. That's his stash, man. You know, you got your silver stash. Rocky the cat has a cat food stash. That's his. That's his stuff for the bad times, man. <laughs> I got to teach him how to open a can opener or something. But he's, you know, he's, he probably can get it open. He's got those flip top lids. But he's got his stash. You got your stash. So you know, cat's got a different strategy than people. And Rocky the cat is sitting on his three foot high pile of cat food. Fish flavored. You see that? He's got fishes on it, right? So anyway, um, you know, because the situation that's going to actually be coming up is the bottom's going to fall out of the stock market because the bottom has already fallen out. And I pointed to this, I think, the other day about the five-year chart of Dr. Copper. You know, the equities and oil and commodities in general. Now, the only commodity that's going up is actually food, and that's because of the weather. But commodities in general are a major indicator of the real economy. But we got this stock market that's going up double in the last since the you know since the 2008 crash in 2009, like early 2009 was the bottom. It's more than doubled what in growth than the GDP plus the inflation rate. Most bull runs are. About 100%. This one's been over like 200-something percent. But it's way... But The thing is where it's really unique is not the length of the bull run. I, You know, maybe there's a time back in the 1800s or something, the early 1800s. But if you're talking from the late 1800s till now, the stock market has always been about within 2%, 2 or 3% of the GDP and inflation rate combined. So, you know, for it to go way above that means what? Fed spending. Fed spending. You know, it's keeping that lemonade stand going up, up, up. Now, this should be a picture of Hillary Clinton in her younger days if she was smart and she never got into politics. I would have a little more respect for her. If she opened up a lemonade stand, became a businesswoman instead of a bullshit artist like in politics, you know? So, like, what do you do? Yeah, I could see her on the unemployment line. You know, it'd be almost like that uh, thing where they had, uh, what's his name? Uh, I forgot his damn name. The comedian was saying, you know, what did you do for a living? He said, oh, you were uh, a stand-up comedian. Oh, no. What, did, what does that mean? Oh, bullshit artist. Did you bullshit last week? No, did you bullshit this week? No, no. You know, did you look for bullshit? No. You know, that would be Hillary Clinton in the politics, you know? She was actually in an unemployment line. So, anyway, but she was a Hubert labor lemonade stand uh doing her thing like this lady here she probably could have made un sold enough lemons to make some freaking money instead of freaking uh taking all that funny money from saudi arabia where they lash women and stuff but uh, i gotta poke some jabs at this lady because she's bad news man but anyway uh gonna get on to something else only the rabbit knows where the hell this damn market's gonna crash you know i keep looking at, i kept looking at what soros was doing because soros made a 16 did 16% of his net wealth in a huge, in several huge bearish bets against the S&P. Some of those, not most of them, but a good part of part of them, have already expired. And he lost part of that, so he lost a good portion of that 16% of his net wealth. Now I'm not rooting for the guy. I don't like the guy or nothing. I'm just saying he's a smart guy and he made all his money on his own. He's a self-made crook. Okay. So what I'm saying is that. You know, for him to be wrong like that, I don't think he's going to be wrong like, you know, by the time late 2015 comes, the rest of the stuff will, he'll lose out on. I think it's going to be coming up before then. I don't know exactly when, though. And, you know, another indication that there's, like, low economic activity besides Dr. Copper sliding in price for the last five years is the oil. And if you look back in 2008, uh, oil went to a spike and peaked all the way up to uh, t like 147, and I think it was very early July 2008. Then late, by late 2008, it crashed to like $35 a barrel, and it was actually moving up again in December. But the markets crashed after that, and the markets 
finally hit their bottom, I think it was late February 2008, 2009, 2009, after oil had already crashed in 2008. So I think that's a predecessor of what the reality of the situation is underlying. And actually, you know, we could, it could be said that there was a bubble in the metals and the commodities back in 2011, which was caused by the Fed. But what it's actually caused by the Fed right now, not a bubble in commodities, not like a bubble in real estate, which was from 2000 to, uh, say, January 1st, 2007, or like what they had in the, real, in, the, in the tech sector in the late 90s, what they got now is a bubble in the general equities. So you're going to see like a lot of that implode. And, uh, you know, it's actually probably going to take a lot of the mom and pop stands, shops with them too, like the, you know, the Hubert's Lemonade Stand or whatever the hell it is. And uh, you're going to see a very too much um, a problem of liquidity. Now, even now, I mentioned before that the U.S. corporations are far more flush with cash than they have been since in the last 10 years. Like in 2005, I mentioned this on another video, they had $500 billion of cash stored overseas in their accounts. Today, it's $2.1 trillion. Um, but if they're in trouble financially because the equities go down, uh, I think it's going to cause them to have to spend, too. But the thing is, um, I don't know how the Fed's going to... Well, you know what? We can kind of look, figure the same kind of garbage. The Fed is going to try to prop up the two bigs to fail again. Again. But the thing is, I don't know how they're going to keep doing this. It seems impossible. But, you know, what they're doing is actually they're creating the money out of thin air. And unfortunately, it's never going to be paid back. The debt, serial, the debt ceiling is going to keep being raised to bail out the two bigs to fail. And eventually the system is going to implode upon itself. But, you know, hopefully we could be one step ahead of these guys. Because what I'm looking at is when a system does implode, I think they know when it's going to implode. They'll pull the rug out at a specific time when it's best for them. And um, they're going to be saying to hell with us. So... Um, you know, actually, i got to tell you the truth, Dad. I don't think silver is your only answer. It def I never said it was. I actually said a lot of it is your tools and you know how to use the tools. And also food. Uh, I'm going to be starting an experiment right now. I was going to do it with the Lukosi coil, but I'm going to start an experiment now with growing seeds and growing trays. And I'm going to use the Willard dark water versus just plain water and see if there's a difference because... I think one of the biggest problems we're going to have in the future is agriculture. And old Jim Rogers is right. And any tricks we can use to up that could pull out of our sleeves to uh, get the growing season shortened and more hardy crops in less time due to global cooling coming up more severe every year, the better off you will be. Actually, agriculture is going to be the mining that mining or kindo mining that's going to actually keep producing and anybody can do it. Uh, but, you know, along with what's going to happen to the commodities, uh, energy shortages. Oh, I actually want to put this out because, you know, when people talk about we have a glut in the oil market, you know what? They make it sound like we got this huge glut, and that's how they describe it. But you know what? It's only a few weeks supply. You know, if you can move the, pr the, uh, the, the demand and the supply 1% one way or the other way, it does not move the price 1%. It moves it like... 15 20 percent did you know that like in other words if we had a five percent shortage in oil due to a major major conflict in the middle east that involves saudi arabia do you know that the price of oil could go double it wouldn't go up five percent i don't know how people don't understand that but actually some of the best accountant cpas in the world don't even understand that type of stuff that you know when we because well, they don't understand macro or not economics if there's a one percent um, shortage in supply. It does not mean the price of a commodity goes up 1%. It goes up exponentially higher than that. It can go up 10%, 15%, or more. A lot of people don't realize that. So, in other words, this huge glut in energy that we supposedly have could disappear overnight. Because I've always maintained that the real thing that's going to freaking uh, uh, move up the silver, gold prices, platinum, and palladium is going to be the energy prices 
And I think the energy prices really are about bottom right now, even though there's talk about $20 and stuff. But you got to remember, $20 is half of what it is right now. That's getting a little ridiculous. Um, you know, if you look at the P&Ls and the net income statements, with the same thing as P&L profit and loss, the, the mines and the, the, actually in shale oil companies are hurting really bad. And they're not producing lots of oil at these rates to uh, add to the supply. It's pretty much all Saudi. If there's one thing that happens with Saudi, the situation will change overnight in a heartbeat. And that could happen with your metals. Very much so. But the media, major media is blowing smoke up everybody's butts, basically. Uh, you know, but, you know, it's revealed even in this Federal Reserve Bank uh, chart where the actual American households are wary of what's going on and their expectations for retail spending next year are very low. And that goes along with the new orders are very low. New orders, future orders, future orders are very low. So they're lying. You know, that's what it comes down to. And when it, the bottom comes out, it's going to come out quick. Um, George Soros, unfortunately, is going to make a lot of money. Uh, on it because even though he lost part of his bearish bet, he's not going to lose out the majority of his bearish bet, which will expire in late 2015. This crap is just taking longer than expected, longer than I expected, but they, the resolution will come about because the price earnings ratios of the stocks are way too damn high. It's kind of like simple arithmetic. It's also simple arithmetic that, you know, the stock market does not vastly double, you know, it's actually more than doubled uh, in growth rate than, uh, what do you call it, the uh, uh, GDP plus inflation rate. Oh, yeah, but also, I also want to mention, last um, July 2014, I was mentioning that if the stock market, bull market, continued past July 2014, at because I says at the time it was already the second longest bull run in U.S. stock market history. It would already it would um, it was the third longest. It was the third longest. If it passed July 2014 and still going up, it would actually be the second longest bull run in U.S. stock market history. The longest bull run would have been the one that happened in the 1920s. And you know what I'm thinking? When this bottom falls out of this deal, it could be something similar to what happened on Black Monday in 1929, which is not actually the big bottom. It kind of went down a lot then. Yeah, everybody knows about that. But the real bottom occurred in 1932. So you might see something happen drastic in 2015. But in 2017... A couple years later is maybe when the real bottom falls out, when a lot more other political events are occurring. We get another president, and who the hell knows what it is, who it's going to be. But uh, we might have some very severe issues. And on top of that, another major, I, I, I call it almost like breaks, breaks on the economy, is going to be the weather, the global, the global cooling. It's going to take its toll on the GDP. And, uh, you know, we've seen what happened in 2014, 2015. They're going to have 2015, 2016, 2016, 2017. I think in a couple years, you're going to see agricultural prices scoot up a lot. Oil prices are going to possibly scoot up a lot. And actually, the global cooling is going to take a major effect on the economy because goods and services just don't move as fast or be produced as fast when there's, you know, a lot of major snowstorms in the most industrialized areas of the world. I mean, even if Alaska gets warmer, that's one thing. You know, hey, you know, people can go out there and take hikes instead of freaking using their snowshoes. But I'm talking about when you're talking about, you know, Boston, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, New York, Jersey City, you know, Harrisburg, New Jersey, whatever the hell it is, uh, D.C. and uh Concord and you know whatever you know all the major industry in the Northeast is actually hampered by more and more severe winters. It's actually going to add up on the um, 
uh, toll of the GDP output, and also people are not going to have as much money to spend on retail seals, which you can already see is already down, because you're going to be spending more on heating oil and staying warm. And you'll be wishing you're down in Florida with your T-shirt going, yay, you want to sell some lemonade. They're not going to be doing that, you know, because most of me up north, that's where the vast majority of people are. So, anyway, um, just want to tell you that there's actually a major divergence between the reality of the economic situation and the way the major media is blowing smoke up everybody's kazoos. But only the rabbit really knows when the bottom's going to fall out of the stock market. And actually, I tend to think, you know, if history repeats itself, we might have almost like a 29-type style crash, but it might be a boomerang up, and then you might see another crash a couple of years later. Because the only way they're going to fix this situation is with real productivity. And real productivity is actually mainly in the areas of finance, pharmaceutical, and uh, Apple phones and uh, Apple watches, like stuff you people don't really need, you know. <laughs> I mean, we can grow our pharmaceutical products, and anybody can freaking take a, you know, a $15 Timex Loris, Loris and it would be just as good as any $500 Apple Watch. I don't know what these things sell, man. <laughs> anyway, even a rabbit can tell you the time, you know. So anyway, uh, I just want to give you a quick update on it. The major media is full of it, and uh, be patient about what's going to happen with this garbage. Actually, the Fed has actually stopped using the word patient, about being patient about raising the... Uh, with the interest rates, they left that word out in their last FOMC meeting. Um, they, they, used, they just left it out. It made it sound like the rates are going to be going up faster. But they said the same exact thing. I, I don't think they're going to raise the rates, man. They can't. They can't, man. They don't have enough money to do that. How are they going to freaking balance the budget and the government and pay all that interest? It's just more BS they're throwing out there, man. So, I don't know. It's going to come to fruition as it is. But in the meantime... You know, uh, the old girl's got the lemonade stand, and Rocky the Cat is sitting on his major stash of three-foot-high cat food, and he always keeps his head on there. He sleeps by it. He's got all his claws ready to freaking fight for his food, and that's the same way you should be with your silver.